Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making a few super simple but adorable fabric projects. My name is Brie. I'm the owner and artist of Upcycled by Brie. If you're wanting to know where to find any of the paint and products I'm using or any of my flips, it'll be over on my website, upcycledbybrie.com. But I always do link all of that down in the description box below for you as well. Also, I wanted to show y'all a couple of pillowcases that I got from a recent estate clean out. Now, I decided to keep these because I thought they would be so cute on my bed. And I'm actually working with LifeLit on this video. They sent me a couple of these bed pillows. They are amazing quality. I cannot wait to open mine and show y'all what they are like. Now, I do have some information about these pillows. I'll put them right here on the screen and then I'll also link everything down in the description box below if you think you might like some for yourself. Wow, that's smart. They put a little piece of cardboard underneath the tape so you don't cut the pillow. Smart move, a life wit. Okay, so I've gotten fabric and stuff in the mail before and it's so funny because I could never get it out of the box. <laughs> there it goes, goodness gracious. So they have them vacuum sealed for more economical packaging. Avoid opening with sharps to avoid cutting the pillows. <laughs> it takes about 24 hours for things like this to expand completely. And if you set them in the sunshine, they'll poof up faster. So already it's poofing up nicely, but we will give it just a little bit of time to expand all the way. It is a cloudy, cloudy day in Kansas. So it's a little darker in my bedroom than usual but I think y'all can see okay. So here is my bed currently. I've got quite the mix of bedding, <laughs> a little bit of girly here with the floral and the fur, a little bit more industrial with the leather belt and the grain sack stripes, and then a little touch of boho here with the pom-poms on the pillows. But I think it all works really well together in adding in one more layer of pillows, I think we'll fill it out just a little bit more. Okay, yes, I have a pillow problem. It's fine, get over it. <laughs> After letting them sit out overnight, they definitely took their shape. Now, these have a sink in softness, so look how soft and comfortable those pillows are, but look at the rebounds. So with the rebounds, it's going to really help support your cervical spine. I'm a side sleeper, so my neck always goes crooked. These pillows are really flat, which I prefer um, over a thick pillow for my neck, but I think these are going to be a much, much better support. And then that sink in softness and quick rebounds helps keep them cool overnight too. So you're not constantly having to flip them over and over. Here are the pillowcases I got from that estate clean out. So I didn't pay anything for these. I saved them from going to the trash. Now, these pillowcases are not in perfect condition by any means. Um, there's definitely some age and wear and tear on some of them, but that was okay with me. I'm having a hard time deciding whether I want to keep this set or this set. I'm really leaning towards this one, but they're a little bit bigger. So we'll see, we'll see how they fit. And then each of these only have one. So I'm going to go ahead and list them as is in case you have um, maybe a twin bed, you just want to do a single pillow. That would be really sweet in a little girl's room. Or if you want to use these for projects, um, once you buy them, it's up to you what you want to do with them, but I could not bring it um, upon myself to cut these apart. I thought about it and I just couldn't do it. How pretty though, they just don't make things like this anymore.
I suppose the true test is going to be the comfort level. So now that I've made it all beautiful, <laughs> let's see how comfortable these pillows really are. So before, again, super flat pillows, which I do like. They don't hurt my neck, but they aren't very supportive. Okay, let's make sure we keep this PG. Well, I probably should have done this at the end of the video. Now I don't want to get up. That's nice. Okay, so when I sleep, I generally sleep on my side with one arm underneath. Oh, that's good stuff. So it's not like too tall and I do feel super like supported because when I'm using my regular old pillows, oh my gosh, it's almost like my head goes down. You want it. Oh, neutral. This is gonna be a game changer. I might actually sleep now. Wow. Again, if y'all think you need some new pillows, I will link these down in the description box below. Lifewood queen size pillows. And I am super happy. I appreciate it, Lifewood. Send me more pillows if you want. I love pillows. For project number one, I am going to be using one of my hand cut decor boards. Now, if y'all have not seen me make these before, I'll link one of the little videos up here for you. And I'll also link it down in the description box below. But I use some old salvaged wood. I usually find this stuff by the side of the road. I do believe this one was a drawer. Um, I cut them down with my jigsaw, drill a hole in them um, with a wood bit. And then sometimes I add some rusty metal. Um, sometimes I paint them. Today, I'm going to be using some drop cloth fabric, adding it to the decor board to make a beautiful decor board wall pocket. I will link this drop cloth down in my Amazon shop below. I order it, I wash it right away, and then I dry it as well to give it just a little bit of softness. I don't use any um, fabric softener, but I do use a laundry detergent. I'm cutting down a piece to size, making sure it's big enough that it'll wrap around the back of the board and I can staple it on securely. Now I did go out to the garage and got a couple of little salvage pieces. I have this old leather collar and then these little rusty metal green pieces that were off of an old ladder. I bent the metal circle using a hammer and my little wire trimmers and shaped it around the edge of the um, board. Then I used a little bit of Gorilla wood glue, slid that onto the edge and used a rusty old screw down through the hole that was on the metal piece. I screwed that on securely, and now it looks like a repair in that crack. Taking the piece of drop cloth and my Stanley staple gun here, I've got just some short little staples in it. I will securely staple the drop cloth to the board. I did that instead of glue it. That way, if somebody wants to remove the drop cloth in the future, they will still have the beautiful decor board without any sticky glue residue. To make the fresh cut edges of this board match the more natural patina of the old wood, I'm gonna use a little bit of the DIY Decrepit Dust. This is a powdered product that literally makes your pieces look decrepit, makes them look old. So I usually just tap a little bit out into the lid. You don't need very much. And I use an old beat up brush here that I can stipple down into the wood grain. I'm not even putting a wax or anything on this first. I'm just gonna work this dust down into all the little grains of the wood. See how it makes it blend just a bit better. Now, if you want something a little bit darker, you could definitely hit it with some clear wax first and then use the dust before, after. Now I'm going to take a couple of the sprigs of lavender. This is the tall lavender from Walmart this year and just place it down into the wall pocket. Now 
And you could use obviously any floral that you like. I think that came out super sweet. I'm gonna make one more and we're gonna do it just a little fancier with a stencil since it's a little bit taller, but drop me a comment down below. What do you think about this first project? Let's go ahead and make this second board. I'm stapling on the drop cloth the same as before, and I will be using DIY paint and Jamie Ray Vintage stencils and stencil brushes. Things first, I'm gonna slide a piece of cardboard under here. That way if somebody does want to remove the grain sack, cover here in the future, it will be um, easy and it won't leak the paint through onto the wood. So I've got my JRV grain sack stripe stencils, say that 10 times fast. And again, all of these paint and products are available over on my website, upcycledbybreed.com. These stencils are super thick, amazing stencils. They are made for retailers, so you can use them over and over again. And I'm going to be using a DIY little black dress for my stripe. Now guys, I have been out of stock. In fact, the whole company has been out of stock on this color forever, and it's finally back in stock. So if you want some, hop on over to my site and grab some before it is gone again. All right, so I've got a little bit of the DIY little black dress inside of this cup. And now I'm going to use my JRV stencil brush. This is a one inch, and I'm not gonna get very much paint on that brush at all. Then I'm going to offload most of the paint onto this tissue and use a very, very, very dry brush. Now I'm gonna line my stencil up along the um, seam at the top here just to make sure I'm staying straight. And I'll use a bit of a combination of a stipple and a little bit of a drag on this fabric. This grain sack stripe stencil, I would say is the toughest one out of all of them, only because these little lines like to wiggle around. I do want to note that my black paint was pretty old. Like I said, it's been out of stock for a while. I should have mixed just the tiniest bit of water in that cup with my paint and it would have gone on a lot easier. I was focusing too hard on getting a good angle and not really thinking. Um, but that would have made the paint move a lot easier. So I could have got a bit of a crisper image, but y'all know me, I don't mind a little bit of distressing, a little bit of perfectly imperfect. Here is DIY Prairie Gray, and this is the color we're gonna use over the JRV Dayton Bread stencil. I thought this would be the perfect one to go over a faux breadboard. The paint is dry. That color went over the black beautifully, but was dark enough to go over the drop cloth. Again, we've got prairie gray and DIY a little black dress. Now I could do a little sanding on here and try to um, fix my kind of sloppy stenciling. I I could do a little sanding on here and work on fixing that stenciling a little bit, but I'm gonna roll with it. Old um, grain sacks were not perfect, so it's it's gonna be like that. I am going to go ahead and use my heat gun and go over this paint. That's gonna help just set it, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Since this is decor, I'm not worried about it. Um, on my pillowcases that I stenciled a while back, I definitely used um, an iron and went over them to really, really make sure they were set. And then those have been washed and there was a little tiny bit of fading in them but barely, and uh, honestly, it just makes them look more authentic. Don't mind the dog hair. To finish this board off and cover up the faux crack, which I guess is really actually a crack, but it doesn't go very far through, I just cut off a little piece of that dog collar, roughed up the edges with an X-Acto knife to make it look old, and then I've just got some black screws. Where'd the other one go? <laughs> Found it. And I'm gonna drill that in for a little faux repair.
and here is a look at the final product leave me a comment below which board was your favorite today I think I like the one with the stenciling on it not gonna lie that little extra detail and that pop of black it really won my heart I wanted to show y'all one more fabric thing before I let you go today because they are very hard to take pictures of and that is a couple of sets of curtains. Last time I had some, they were very popular. So I'm going to go ahead and list these and I'll put measurements in the description, but I just wanted to hold them up for you. That way you could see them a little better. So this is one set, I have two of each. So this is a set of two, I have washed them. They even smell good. I've washed them. They are ready to go. They dried out in the sun as well. This is actually the bottom. Here we go. So the top has a nice thick rod holder. What's that called? There's probably a technical name, but look how beautiful this pattern is. And I just, I tried over and over and over to get pictures. They just didn't do it justice. So I'll do my best to get some good photos, but I just wanted you guys to see how absolutely gorgeous these are. And I thought about saving them. I don't have anywhere for them. You see me looking around my house. Okay, so that's one set. Like I said, there's a set of two. And then here is the other set. <gasps> I should probably keep these, you guys. I've never seen any like this. Like, it's like a waffle pattern almost. And these are bigger, I think. Yeah, I washed these as well. So this one here, that's how big the pole holder is. Oh, on this one, there's two. There's a thicker one and then a skinnier one. But it's just that beautiful waffle pattern most of it until you get to the very bottom. And then it's got a design, almost there. <laughs> Just gorgeous. So I've got two sets of curtains. Each of them have two. Oh, and then on this set, there's one tie back. There, I wish there was two, but there wasn't. But if you were um, a good enough seamstress or sewer or whatever, you could chop this one in half and make two tie backs out of it. So I just wanted to show you guys, again, I'll list them on my site, I'll put dimensions, but pictures just weren't doing them justice. I hope y'all got some good inspiration from today's video and had a good time watching it. I always have so much fun making these videos for y'all. Again, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell to all, share this video out with a friend. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends. Really? Oh, now you could be nervous. You know I didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. You know I didn't put those there for you. You get up. Move, please. Ma'am, go. <laughs> Maisie. My lantern. Phew.